What does one of the heaviest insects in the world fauna look like? What are giant ants capable of, which are difficult not to pay attention to? And what butterfly poison do tribes use to hunt hippos? Now you'll find it out. In this episode, you'll see the largest insects that were caught on camera. Let's go. Weta. What's Weta? Every person who sees this giant for the first time in their life asks. In fact, don't be frightened. In front of us is just one of the heaviest insects in the world, a giant beetle. These wingless insects received such an unusual name from the indigenous residents of New Zealand, the Maori people. How did they even manage to study these creatures? They're so creepy. Like grasshoppers, only much larger. Probably the key role was played by the fact that one can encounter these monsters absolutely everywhere. They live in trees, in caves, among rocks, as well as in forests and even in fields. They feed, by the way, on lichens, leaves, flowers, and various fruit. But if they're in a mischievous mood, then they might not mind eating their own congener. It's common for such a crime to occur at night, as this is the time of day when these giant bugs are active. But truth be told, it's worth noting that these insects are far from being pests. Because of the vegan part of their diet, they often spread fruit around and help plants to spread. By the way, would you like me to tell you about another of their amazing features? Scientists have found out that these insects can easily withstand cold weather and even severe frost. This arthropod can live in ice for several weeks. All life processes of the insect are suspended, but at the moment of defrosting, Weta feels as if nothing had happened. Unlike the previous beetle, the Titan beetle leads a much more secretive lifestyle. But why would it want to do that? After all, it's so large, has muscular legs, jaws which are ready to tear apart any of its opponents, and it's also covered with strong, spiny armor. It's a killing machine that should be at the top of the food chain. However, it's not that simple. In fact, this beetle doesn't need any extra trouble, and it's used to staying out of sight. It lives quietly in the Amazon jungle and doesn't show off. But those who do find it are definitely speechless. Not for nothing, as it's one of the largest beetles in the world with a length of up to six inches. And according to some reports, there are exceptions in nature. Some individuals can grow one and a half times bigger. But don't think that this is an unkillable giant, strong creature that no one can match. Yeah, it's big, but this big creature usually lives only a few weeks. Scientists have not yet determined the exact cause of its short life. It's believed that perhaps it's because of their inability to digest food, because of which the body wears out very quickly. By the way, this is not the only thing scientists don't know. They also have no idea what the Titan beetle babies look like. Of course, they were recreated by analogy with other species, but no one has ever seen babies of this particular species in nature. Apparently, the Titan beetle larvae are really very securely hidden. The next insect lives much longer, more than half a year. However, I cannot call it weak or unworthy of such a life. I'm talking about the Goliath beetle, the very insect that can knock a human down when it collides with them, and you'll see why. So, it's worth starting with the fact that the length of the Goliath beetle usually doesn't exceed 5 inches, with a mass of 3.5 ounces. But how can it do anything to a human with such a size? Well, there's a little trick. It'll put a human on their back if they ride a motorcycle and accidentally crash into the flying Goliath beetle. These big creatures don't fly very well, but it's enough for them to live. In fact, scientists don't understand how such a big insect manages to get up in the air. But that's another story. The beetles move quite quickly through the trees using their front legs. Because of its giant size and bright color, the beetle is very visible. These beetles feed on tree sap, overripe fruit, and palm leaves. Sometimes their diet includes pollen. Due to the fact that the beetle is highly visible, it's very popular among collectors. It's not difficult to find it, and it's not difficult to take care of the giant. All you need is warmth, humidity, and a huge pile of wood waste to feed the larva. African Giant Swallowtail What dangers do you think butterflies might pose? They're so beautiful, so bright and kind, aren't they? Well, they're not. 
You're looking at the African giant swallowtail, the most toxic and largest butterfly in Africa. The first individual was found by an English explorer in 1775 and sent to London for research. There, people almost immediately realized that they were facing a real monster, which body contains a toxic glycoside called aubane. It's deadly. Local tribes use it to hunt hippos. I don't think it's necessary to explain that if we have no chance of surviving it at all. The only thing that would be right to say is that the butterflies don't need such a serious toxin to hunt large creatures. On the contrary, they need it for self-defense. The poison is formed in their body for a reason. The fact is that young African giant swallowtails eat the leaves of a poisonous plant. The toxin accumulates and remains in the body without harm to the carrier. It's a mystery how exactly they manage to survive its impact and use it for their own benefit. Wallace's Giant Bee When some big fly or wasp flies into your home, you believe you can't think of anything worse. After all, the insect seems big to us, as if it's hard to imagine something bigger, right? Well, Mother Nature is always ready to surprise us. And it does, classy, always flawlessly. In front of you is a Wallace's Giant Bee. And it's really huge. It's not Photoshop and it's not a trick of the eye. The females of these bees are regarded as the largest of their kind in the world. Their length is up to one and a half inches and their wingspan is up to 2.4 inches. On the large head, there are huge jaws for collecting resin used in the construction of nests. By the way, these bees also lay rather large eggs, up to 0.3 inches long. This monster lives in Indonesia and, fortunately for everyone, doesn't terrorize the locals because it's quite a rare representative of the animal world. You know the expression, it's hard to find, easy to lose, and impossible to forget? Perfectly fits here. After all, these insects really do something unbelievable. For example, as messengers of terror, they're happy to take termites' houses. With the help of their jaws, they intimidate neighbors and separate their part of the house from the new one. Of course, no one will argue. Otherwise, then there's a risk of getting into trouble. Malaysian Giant Ant Did you know that ants are one of the most common social insects of the Hymenoptera order, not counting bees? There are more than 14,000 different species of ants in the world. Of course, it doesn't make sense to talk about all of them, so I suggest moving on to one of the most unique and interesting, the Malaysian Giant Ant. It was named giant for a reason. The length of the body of this beautiful creature can reach one inch. It leads mainly a nocturnal lifestyle. It gathers a team of its congeners and goes to collect excreta of sap-sucking insects from the true cicadas family. In fact, these are their main feeders. By dawn, everyone returns to the anthill, and in the afternoon, the other hidden work inside the house begins. Basically, in one such house of the Malaysian giant ant, there are at least eight cameras. In total, this is enough for more than 7,000 workers, as well as some number of soldiers. In general, it's a full-fledged city with a unique arrangement and other pretty elaborated features. The whole area of the underground passages and tunnels hidden from the eyes of others can reach almost two and a half acres. Giant Burrowing Cockroach You know, we've forgotten about the main fertile ground for all the most unusual and strangest. Yes, I'm talking about Australia. Let's head over there and take a look at their local and favorite giant burrowing cockroach. However, it's probably hard to like a cockroach the size of a small mouse, don't you think? Except one can adore it for not touching people and eating eucalyptus peacefully. The giant burrowing cockroach is so fanatical about that, it even settled in the northeast of the continent because in this region, eucalyptus grows especially dense. This diet has made it a real giant. It reaches almost 4 inches in length and has a weight of 1.2 ounces. If you think that this is not a large size at all, then for comparison, a sparrow weighs exactly the same. And that's not all it has to offer. Besides, the giant burrowing cockroach is quite intelligent and clever. For its own safety, it's settled in a colony of a hundred similar individuals, forming a real underground city. The cockroaches even have their own mini homes, and if someone decides to attack one of them, this will be followed by an immediate response by the family. 
Under such conditions, giant burrowing cockroaches get everything they need and return to a safe environment, quietly developing and not fearing for their lives. You've probably learned a lot about the world of insects, and now I suggest you see what new species scientists have discovered this year. DiCaprio's Snake Snail-eating snakes are a well-known genus of snakes from the colubrids family, which were first discovered back in the 19th century. But that was just the beginning. To this day, scientists continue to find new species of snail-eating snakes. And at the beginning of the year, they discovered a snake with such a complex name. Leonardo DiCaprio, who is known not only as a great actor but also as a conservationist, found out about this news. Leo suggested scientists name the red-eyed snake after his mother, Ermelin, and this was reflected in the Latin name of the animal. The newly found snake lives in the jungles of Panama. It's small, about 15 inches long, and spends its time on palm branches a few feet above the ground. The snake is interesting because it defends itself from enemies not by biting, but by a protective ring around its head and emitting an unpleasant odor. Like other snail-eating snakes, the DiCaprio snake eats mostly snails that are unlucky enough to be near the reptile. It would seem that everything is great, except that there's one unpleasant nuance in the discovery. The new snail-eating snake lives in forests, which are actively cut down by people. The snake is arboreal and may not be able to survive in areas without forests. So soon, the newly discovered species may become extinct if the trend continues. A new species of spiders Another newcomer to the world of fauna is a spider that was found just a few months ago. It can also boast an unusual name. It was found in Australia, as if Australians and visitors to this country lack creepy creatures. The new spider was proudly named Euplos dignitas, which can be translated from Latin as dignity or greatness. And indeed, such a creepy spider inspires fear and respect. The spider reaches 8 inches in length, which means it's among the largest in the world. I just wonder why no one's ever discovered it before. Maybe it's all about its color. Probably, with such a reddish hue, the spider can easily hide among the trees. That's why people couldn't find it, right? Not really. In fact, this spider, like its relatives, the so-called trapdoor spider, builds trap dens and hides in them for most of its life. Females feel so good in these dens that they spend there all their life. And males sit there for five to seven years from birth and get out only to find a female for mating. For this, Euplos dignitas simply looks for another burrow and moves into it. Well, in general, these spiders hide in burrows not because they're antisocial or something like that. It's just the way they escape from the sweltering Australian heat. They like their dwelling so much that they may even hunt directly from it, opening the burrow at night or weaving a cobweb right next to it. Today, you've already seen a snake named after DiCaprio. The next animal in this episode also got its name in honor of a famous person. I'm talking about the Hyloscurtus tolkeni. Yes, you got it right. It was named after the writer J.R.R. Tolkien, who gave the world The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and The Silmarillion. Researchers who recently came across the frog liked its unusual grayish-green color with a black and yellow pattern. They thought that such a frog should live not in the real, but in a fantasy world and that Middle Earth would suit it perfectly. So they named it after the legendary writer. Although a new home like the Shire or even Mordor would suit the frog, it lives in our real world. You can find it in Ecuador. At the moment, scientists have managed to catch only one individual. Thanks to it, they were able to study the new species at least a little and describe it. So far, the researchers know little information about the new species, so they'll have to settle at the Ecuadorian streams for a long time. The found Hyloscurtus tolkeni was caught there, which means that there are also its congeners nearby, which will give more information about the species. New Gymnures I'm sure most of you have just heard a new word by now. Gymnures are also known as hairy hedgehogs or moon rats, and that's what they are. They look like a hybrid between a rat and a hedgehog. Outwardly, they resemble large rats with large heads, but belong to the Arenicidae family, although they do not have protective quills like hedgehogs. They are protected by an unpleasant smell. There is an addition to these unusual creatures from Southeast Asia. This year, scientists came across two new gymnures, which were named as follows, Pato gymnura intermedia and Pato gymnura minima. 
These are the most secretive creatures of the entire episode. Pato Junura Minima didn't even show up to be caught on camera, and Pato Junura Intermedia was photographed only once. But that's for now. I'm sure that soon scientists will get to know them better and study them better. Well, for now, they know that these creatures live in the Philippines. In the mountains of eastern Mindanao, where researchers have not previously combed out the area in search of new mammals. But they should hurry. The areas where the new gymnures live are being cut down by humans, which can't help but affect the animal population. In just six months, scientists have already found quite a few new and interesting animals. But what about the past year? In 2022, researchers also found a lot of newcomers to the world of fauna, and some of them managed to really surprise. I suggest taking a look at them as well. Keep watching to see an amazing new jellyfish that doesn't look like a jellyfish, a live chocolate frog, an interesting tiny owl, and more. Amazing Jellyfish We all know what jellyfish look like, and surely each of us can distinguish them from other sea creatures, but this jellyfish is unusual. It doesn't even look like a jellyfish, it looks more like something alien. And no wonder, because when it moves around in the water, it looks like a UFO. This jellyfish was discovered last year. Scientists have been hunting it for a long time. In the best sense of the word, they searched for it for 15 years and finally found it in Monterey Bay off the coast of the United States. Atola Reynoldsi, so they named it, belongs to the Atoll Deep Sea Crown Jellyfish. These jellyfish are so named because of their circular groove on the outside of the umbrella which divides it into central disc and a crown. Due to their external resemblance to an atoll, these jellyfish literally blend in with the surface of the reef. The main distinguishing feature of the animal is a lot of growths on the edges of the umbrella, which resemble spines. One of the tentacles of the jellyfish is hypertrophied. It's able to stretch in length, become six times larger than the diameter of the umbrella of the jellyfish. Scientists believe that the long tentacle is necessary for the jellyfish to more effectively capture its prey, which may include other cinderia. Bambutula Mostly, new animals are discovered by scientists who devote their whole lives to this work, but it also happens that discoveries are made by other people, for example, bloggers. Last year, Thai wildlife YouTuber Jo Cho Sipawat stumbled upon a new species of tarantula. The predatory tarantula was found in bamboo cavities. The arthropod is good at hiding, and it's very difficult to find it, but Jo Cho managed to do it. This is not just a new species of tarantula, but so far the only known spider species that has chosen bamboo as its home. Interestingly, members of the species only choose mature bamboo stems that have damage caused by a natural process or suffered from the teeth of various animals. Inside the stem, these arthropods create their own territory with diversion tunnels and entrance plugs. The Frog from the Harry Potter Universe Today I've already shown you a frog that could live in Middle Earth, a lot of people might argue with that, but you can't argue with the fact that this frog would fit perfectly in another universe, the world of witchcraft and wizardry. Look for yourself, it's just a copy of the edible chocolate frog from the Harry Potter movies and books. Of course, these frogs do not live in boxes where you can find live pictures of wizards. These creatures live in South America. For the first time, scientists came across them last year in the Putamayo River in Peru. They did it quite by accident during a biological census of the inhabitants of the reservoir. The scientists named the creature the tapir frog for the fact that its long snout resembles the snout of the South American tapir. But still, to me, it's more correct and interesting to call it the frog from Harry Potter. Scientists had to try really hard to find these frogs because they're very small. They reach only a couple of centimeters in length, and besides, they differ in an unusual brown color. It's easy for them to blend in with the buds or trees in the Amazon area. Scientists believe that these frogs may live widely in the Amazonian peatlands, which is not very typical for common frogs. Owl When we think of owls, we usually picture fairly large birds that can deal with hefty prey, but owls come in many forms. Last year, for example, scientists found this small owl. The species Otis bicagila can otherwise be called the Principe scops owl because the bird was found on the island of Principe off the coast of Africa. 
The locals have known about this owl for almost 100 years, but only recently this species has been scientifically described. As you can see, these owls are not big at all. Among the usual owls, they stand out with their unusual cry. It's not very similar to the typical owl's whoop. It's more like some screeching and vibrating signals that are repeated once a second and more like the sounds of insects. In addition, these owls can produce a screech that resembles the voice of a cat. Pairs of the Principe Scops owl often scream like this in duet at nightfall. Although the species has only recently been discovered, it's already been recognized as being on the verge of extinction. The fact is that the habitat of these owls is very small, and besides, their habitat is very vulnerable. And now, let's move on to the little studied and unknown creatures from the depths of the ocean. Humpback Anglerfish Predatory fish have been famous for their unusual appearance, which scares people. But if the shark or something like it seems scary to you, then you simply haven't seen any deeper water inhabitants. One such, by the way, is the humpback anglerfish, which lives at depths of up to 14,760 feet. By the mere appearance of the fish, you can understand that it's not happy with everything that's happening and wants to eat someone, or at least a bite. But how does it find this prey? Here, nature has taken everything into account. The humpback anglerfish uses a built-in flashlight as bait. Well, in more scientific terms, it uses very light photophores on the end of the elysium on its head. This outwardly rod-like thing allows the fish to lure in all sorts of crustaceans and other small critters. But even if the prey surpasses this fish in size, it's not a problem. Because of excellent stretching stomach, this fish can easily deal with large prey. To make you understand, in the body of one humpback anglerfish, which is about two and a half inches long, once a nine and a half inch fish was found. What else can be said about this creature is that the females are significantly larger than the males. While the former reach a length of seven inches, for the average male, one inch would be the limit. Long-nosed Chimera For some creatures, Mother Nature created a small outgrowth to help in the hunt. While for others, it overdid it and made them look ridiculous. As you understand, I'm talking about this nosy fish called a Chimera. You can find this odd creature at depths of up to 8,530 feet. Given this elongated snout, the Chimera reaches about five feet in length. Despite its size, it's quite maneuverable and always sticks its nose where it doesn't belong. However, its carelessness hides thoughtfulness and preparedness because right before the first dorsal fin, it has a venomous spine. As soon as the Chimera senses danger, it pulls it out. In the usual state, the spine is hidden. These creatures eat literally anything they come across. All kinds of sea urchins, mollusks, crabs, and other similar critters are part of their diet. Surprisingly, it turns out that these fish are a real delicacy. They're actually caught and served to the table. And in some places, their fat, which is rich in vitamin A, is even used as medicine or lubricant. Vampire from Hell That's more of a name from a rock band than an animal, don't you think? However, judging by the way it looks, I take it back. It's really a vampire, and it's really hellish. At least that mouth seems to symbolize sucking the fish on its victim and draining all its blood and more. In fact, everything is much more simple and humane. The vampire from hell or the vampire squid feeds not on blood, but on the most common remains of dead plankton. This mollusk opens its mouth as wide as possible and grabs a lot of water at once. Then it squeezes the water out through the holes between the tips of its tentacles and enjoys the remains of aquatic life lingering in its body. And then you ask the question, why is this creature using nature's gift of its mouth for such a small purpose? Why not suck all the fish into itself and become the true king of the seas? The answer is very simple. The vampire squid is adapted to its habitat. Because it lives quite deep, about half a mile underwater, there is very little prey around it, which means getting life energy is not easy. Collecting remains, however, is a cushy job. You can safely drift around and get nutrients, which are also very much at the bottom. However, despite this style of feeding, the vampire squid has well-developed jaw beaks, very similar to the jaws of predatory squids and cuttlefish. Nevertheless, the animal that feeds exclusively on detritus doesn't need such powerful and sharp jaws. That's it for today. What from this episode impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching.